So, story number one, which was hilarious. Um, allegedly, or not allegedly, because, you know, she's been tried and found guilty, but a cleaner um, stole 31000 after an open saw charity shop refunded her an error. This is... This is what is a sad story. It's a sad story, but it's also funny because if you've ever worked in retail, you'd know how often or how um close, you know how often and how easy it is to make an error like this. Um, that was one of the parts of retail that I never really enjoyed and something that I've con- continually have struggled with in my life. Right, is my inability to do any kind of simple equations. Right, maths isn't my forte, and of course, most you know most shops, most retail stores have you know. Um, tills that are fairly intuitive you know you get especially when you get new merchandise in that's usually scanned in uh, beforehand via head office you download a packet or something that kind of uploads into your system you're scanning it into a store when it arrives your delivery driver and then that goes into your stock right digitally so it then updates as the stock system on the till automatically so it's not much you need to do in it you're just literally pressing buttons on the screen um, you scan a thing it says how much money you're tendering you put it in it tells you how much to give back blah 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 but there are occasions when sometimes those sort of like digital systems that they use to sort of update stock and manage it don't work. And then you have to sort of like figure stuff out on the slide, mark stuff down with a pen. I don't know, just, you know, you just have to kind of use your common sense or your basic arithmetic. And I don't have the basic arithmetic. So there's been occasions where you've, you've maybe incorrectly given someone change. You gave them incorrect change. You've refunded them too much. Not to this extent, don't get me wrong, but... I can definitely see where the error would happen and how it would occur, especially if the person's chatting. Because that's a standard trick some scammers do as well. They do a trick where they are they'll distract you with their charm and their wit as they get to the as they get to the till, or they'll just confuse you with loads of different scenarios that are not of your you know they're not of your doing. Like oh my god, I think I lost my keys. Or oh, do you see any keys over there? Okay, no. How, how much is that? Just can I pay you half in cash, half in card? You know, just start throwing stuff at you, and then you just lose yourself, and then suddenly you're tapping too many zeros into the machine. But this is a hilarious story because I think a lot more people would have done this than would probably would care to admit. Um, but anyway, it continues says so. It says a cleaner spent thirty one thousand in a day after a charity shop accidentally transferred more than 90000 into her bank account. Um, Comfort Kondu from Manchester, auntie went in, bro. She was not playing. She even turned up to court in a pink jacket, flossing. Um, auntie Comfort Kondu um, was returning an item to a charity shop for £9 refund when she a mistake happened. But instead of alerting her bank or the charity for the unexpected windfall, the grandmother of 12 fell prey to temptation and acted dishonestly. <laughs> Is that her saying that? I fell prey to temptation and the devil. Oh, God, I love it. Kondu 52. Oh, it looks great for her age, isn't it? Um, for 15 months. Uh, suspended for two years after admitting the theft at Manchester Court. Now, get, don't get me wrong. Seeing from charity shops is scummy, scum, scum, right? But, in you know... She didn't exactly put someone a gun up someone's head and then jack the money from the safe, right? It was a clerical error by the staff member. Don't get me wrong, right? Don't get me wrong, please. But is it doesn't it sound worth it for thirty grand suspended jail sentence, two years, for fifteen months or two years, which you know, she's definitely not gonna get in trouble again, I'm assuming. She's probably gonna keep her nose clean. And she was able to kind of like launder that money out of the country and put it into the hands of people most that need, right? People back home, right? Um, help to build a, a house for somebody, you know, contribute to somebody setting up a business, maybe put a couple people through school, right? Because that kind of money will go a long way back in Africa, right? So imagine, like, it might be worth it, you know, legitimately what might be worth it. Obviously, she's got a criminal record and, you know, having a face plus across the BBC and having a wallet like me talk about it isn't the greatest thing. But I don't know, man. A part of me is thinking it's maybe a risk worth taking. Not a risk, but it's maybe, yeah, it's a risk worth taking if you're going to obviously transfer into other accounts. The court, the court heard how staff inadvertently added two noughts and four other figures while entering an electronic credit card note into the till at the men cap shop in Openshaw in October 2019 so true and it happens a lot more uh, more often than you'd imagine honestly um especially um the times that i've been working in retail where essentially the machine that you used to pay you used to refund person as well so that kind of what's it called a uh, p i don't know whatever it's called ppe machine whatever card machine is called so sometimes you have to be very very careful 
that's why sometimes if you look at somebody that's um refunding you in the store they're usually very slow and methodical in the amount of numbers that they're pressing in there and then of course the more senior the person is and if they've definitely got if def especially if they've got keys jangling off their jeans they'll be like pressing that stuff like you know not even looking um which always kind of upset me and got me really angry but it said here once she realized the area condu of openshaw um transferred 57 into other accounts 57 grand it's other accounts including those of her family so i'm assuming she, the, the other oh so i'm assuming the other 30 whatever's made up she they kind of got a hold of but the other bit they didn't get a hold of i'm assuming i don't know the charity shop um quickly discovered the area the error sorry but they only managed to retrieve two thirds of the missing money it's not known the rest of the cash was spent on <laughs> of course it's not known <laughs> Imagine them trying to pin this on her, like interviewing the auntie, like in the room for hours, trying to get her to confess. And she's like, I don't know. I sent it to my own. What's their names? I don't have their names. What's their email? I only have their email addresses. You're trying to email them and they're not replying back. It's just madness. It's believed the charity which helps people with learning difficulties will now be able, liable to a loss because it was caused by human error. Oh, that's the bummer bit, isn't it? That's the bummer. I wonder if the staff member got sacked. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm assuming yes. Let's say that for sure. Maybe not now. Maybe not during these times. I'm not, I'm not sure if it happened now or if it happened ages ago. But bloody hell, man. Um, she will now face a proceeds of crime hearing where she'll be expected to return the outstanding 31 grand, which represents 18 months worth of profits for the charity shop. Jesus Christ. Uh, again, you know, she's probably going to be put on a payment plan and she'll rather take that hit in it, I guess. Condo initially claimed she had been expecting a 12000 from another source. <laughs> When she realized that she was hired and inspected, she said that she had tried to raise the issue with her bank, but inquiries revealed this was false. Of course, they've only got to check the, check the records. Defense counsel Max um, Safman said Kondu was a hardworking lady in the vast majority of her time. Sentencing um, Judge Nicholas Dean QC said Kondu fell prey to temptation to use the money she knew perfectly well wasn't hers. This is our character for you, and you're brought on yourself. Great shame, and dare I say, a very great deal of anxiety. Mate, shame of anxiety for 57 grand to send back home to your family and friends in a country that they needed the most right is probably a worth risk worth taking especially if she decides to probably do what i think she might end up doing just buy the first ticket back wherever she's from and just not come back <laughs> oh absolute legend absolute bloody legend man um what would you do if that was you if it's someone incorrectly uh, refunded you ninety thousand into your account. What would you do, especially now, right, with how the situation is going on now with COVID and people's lack of prospects? What would you do, honestly? It's but and again, it's it's even worse because the scenario is a charity shop, so it's everything's laid out for it to be an easy moral decision. We just say, I just I just give the money back. But honestly, tell me what you do. Let me know in the comments down below. What would you do if somebody incorrectly um refunded you ninety thousand into your account? <laughs> and that dropped straight away as well i'm assuming bloody hell painful stuff man painful stuff